everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. Today I have a Transformers Robots in Disguise review for you. This is Warrior Class Soundwave. I almost said Leader Class there for a minute, but of course it's not. He's tiny. So this is uh, Warrior Class Soundwave, sometimes also called Deluxe Class. Um, take a look on the side here. You can see it says Warrior Class. Kind of a nice little picture there. And then on the back just shows the robot mode, the vehicle mode, and of course the transformation instructions. And then the rest of this is mostly warnings and other legal jargon and shows you how to use the app game if that still exists. I'm not really sure. Technically, it's uh, part of the kind of sub-brand Combiner Force for this like last season of Robots in Disguise. They're calling it Combiner Force. Even though I do not believe Soundwave can combine or merge with any other figures, I believe it's just a standalone warrior class, much like Blur and the other ones that we've taken a look at so far. So, here is Soundwave. We'll go ahead, we'll get him out of the packaging, and we'll take a closer look. So here is Soundwave out of the packaging, and I have to say, he looks fantastic. He definitely, to me, is a cross between the Prime look, of Soundwave, which makes sense because Robots in Disguise is kind of a sequel series to Prime. And also, like, Robots, not Robots, Fall of Cybertron or War for Cybertron. Especially in the vehicle mode, as we'll see in a little bit. But really nice color scheme. He's got the big Decepticon symbol for the app game there on the chest. Not a lot of kibble on the back. Really hardly any. I mean, you can see some wheels here in the feet, but that doesn't look bad at all, in my opinion. So, really nice job, and it's a really fun transformation we'll get into in a moment. The head also really reminds me of, uh, like, Cybertron or Galaxy Force um, Sideways, or in Galaxy Force, I think he was called Noise Maze. Head really reminds me of that as well, and that is light piping. You can kind of see if I put my finger behind it, it gets a little darker. So, very cool. I like this figure a lot. I When I first saw pictures of it, I really didn't think I was going to bother with it. Just because I feel like I already have so many Soundwave that kind of have this alt mode, which we'll get into in a minute. But I like it a lot. Uh, for articulation, the head can go from side to side, and it can kind of rock back and forth. It is on the ball joint, but also the thing that it's on can kind of swivel, and that's part of the transformation. You have a ball joint here in the shoulder. Ball joint in the elbow. Uh, can the wrists move? No, the wrists are stationary, but that's all right. I don't think you need that articulation. You have a swivel here where the kind of gray part of the midsection can swivel from side to side. Then you have a ball joint in the hip. You have a thigh swivel. You have pretty much 90 degrees at the knee. And then you have a little bit of swivel in the ankle. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Uh, no side to side, though. So you can really get some nice poses with him. He also has this little accessory. Kind of a cool metallic little blue gun. Which, of course, if you're a fan of G1 Soundwave, you know he always has that shoulder cannon. And I really like that. I think it adds to his look, and he looks really cool. You can also take it off, and he can wield it if you like. Pegs into his hand a little weird, but you can get it in there. And then he can wield it. Although when he wields it, I have to admit, it kind of just looks like a hair dryer. I don't know. It's the first thing that comes to mind. Um, whoops. Stand up for a second there, Soundwave. Trying to show off your gun. Uh, there is a little like fold there as well there's a little joint i'm not really 100 percent sure what that's for maybe like if you're just if you have this plugged in and you kind of want them to kind of fold it back like that kind of like a war machine or something like that or maybe a little g1 megatron you could do something like that if you want unfortunately there is this joint and you can see it here it's for the transformation and it, i don't know if i'm just not getting it to lock in place or if it doesn't really lock in place but every time I try to move the shoulder joints, it ends up lifting that up. Oh, there's actually an extra hinge there where the joint meets the actual body. So you can move it up, you can move it down. I think it's meant to be up, though. But I could be incorrect. I think you can do whatever you like, actually. But yeah, I really do like the robot mode with the exception of... And I think it's just because the shoulder joints are nice and tight, which is good. Because you don't want loose shoulder joints, otherwise the arms would be real floppy. Yeah, maybe I just didn't have it snapped in before or something because it's a little bit better now, so that's good. But yeah, really nice robot mode. I like it a lot. The color scheme, of course, is perfect sound wave. Really dark blue with red and gray accents. 
pretty much everything you'd want. I mean, if there was some kind of way to make, you know, little mini cons or something stored in the chest, sure, that would be great. But then you'd be a heck of a lot bulkier. And I think in this case, it was better to just leave that out. Because we already have enough deployers and things, and we see how those toys kind of suffer from that. And this figure in the robot mode, I think, looks great. And definitely doesn't need that gimmick. It's just a nice representation of Soundwave in the Warrior class. Really great uh, robot mode. So let's go ahead and get into his transformation. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just pull off the shoulder gun for now. Uh, basically, there I feel like there are a couple of steps that are needed that aren't in the directions. Or maybe just the directions are a little hard to see because they're so tiny. I mean, I liked it better than when they used to give us actual books. And they still do for Titan's Return, which is nice. But Robots in Disguise, maybe just to keep the budget down, they just print them on the back of the card. In any case, you're going to start off, you can see these shoulder pads, they're going to rotate forward 90 degrees. Very simple. I mean, you could even leave them like that if you like that look better all the time. Just an idea. Uh, then you're going to kind of rotate the arm section back, and that's going to come to a logical stopping point because there's a little tab inside here. Uh, maybe it's on the arm. I can't remember, but it'll come to a logical stopping point. There it goes. Yes, there is a tab. It's super tiny. It's right there where my finger is. You can kind of see it right there. So to pull this back, you can see it a little better. And then it'll come up and hit that tab and stop. So it's kind of a way for it to click into place. So you're going to do that with both hands. Now I swear the directions do not show this, but there's a little piece that rotates out and then you can kind of put this down on the ball joint and you can see how that all lines up flush now. And I'll get a little bit closer. So that flap comes down and now it's kind of flush with this piece. I swear the directions do not show you that. So you're gonna rotate that down and then just kind of bend it down just so that it fits flush like that. So the arms are pretty much done for now. You're going to lift up the whole chest plate like I showed earlier that I was having trouble with. And there's another joint inside here, so it's going to rock back this way. Now at this point, you need to, actually before you do that, you have to rotate this head section down. And you have to make sure that it lines up in between those two posts. Because then, when you rotate this down, the head has to clear in between there. You see what I'm, I can see right down there? And then you can bring this down and it'll click into place. And you have this little bit of red windscreen there. And just kind of leave the hands out to the side for now. You're going to come to the back. You're going to flip out these wheel sections towards the inside of the figure like that. You can flip the feet up. Then at the thigh swivel, you're going to rotate 180 degrees. And then you can go ahead and peg the feet together, or I should say the legs together like that. Now you can kind of see how there's a little tab hole on the, each kneecap or knee pad or how, whatever term you'd like to use for that. Uh, you're going to rotate. There's a hinge right here in the crotch. That's all going to rotate up. And then you're going to kind of just fold it up. And then inside here, and it's very hard to see, but right here where my finger is, Right there and right there are super tiny little tabs and they're going to peg into the kneecaps just to kind of keep that solid like that. So at this point we're getting pretty close. Now again I swear the directions don't adequately show this. There's a tab here which is going to tab in right there. So as you bring that down, there's also, you can see, a little tab right here. And that's going to tab in here, as well as a tab here that's going to tab into the forearm. So you're going to bring those down and then just kind of line up all those tabs. And this whole thing is just going to come together. Bring that in. Tab the forearm in. Make sure this lines up. And you're going to do that on both sides. And that's going to shore up the vehicle mode here. So yeah, the directions are a little weird. 
But you can see here the vehicle mode that we are left with. Very reminiscent, in my opinion, of the War Within and not War Within, War for Cybertron. I keep saying the wrong thing. It was a video game that came out for, I believe, PS3 and Xbox 360 a couple years ago at this point. War, I think it was War for Cybertron, and then there was a sequel, Fall of Cybertron. And in both of those toy lines, we got a sound wave that was very similar to this vehicle mode. So it's a little hollow underneath, but not a lot of robot kibble, which is nice. You can bring the gun back in and you can plug it into either one of these. And then maybe that's what that, you can, you can kind of move from side to side and it has that little bit of rocking there for, you know, more flexibility when firing. The interesting thing, though, is that the box kind of shows it like, see how there's like a little gap there in between the legs? It kind of shows it like sitting like this in between the legs. Which I guess you could just sit it there, but there's no way to like link it in there. And I've even tried like maybe that's why you're supposed to rock it back so that it sits in there better. But it doesn't really work. I almost kind of wish it did. Because I kind of think that would look cool. Like if that was just the perfect width that this could just slide in there. And then it could just sit right there and it will be nice and centered. But you can also plug it into either of these spots on the forearms. So you can have that. You can have it over here. You can have it in either of these two. So there's a decent number of places to mount this cannon. Or you could leave it off completely up to you. I kind of just like to put it in here. I think that works. Rolls decently. But yeah, I like it. I really like this vehicle mode a lot more than I thought I would. You can see the robot hands, but I feel like because they're the same color as the rest of the vehicle mode, they blend in a little bit. So they're not super noticeable. It's not like they're a fluorescent yellow or something. So it's not that big a deal. But yeah, I like it a lot. I really think this is a fun little vehicle mode. And the transformation is fun. Once you figure it out, especially, you know, you can do it once or twice and then you're really comfortable with it. I think it works. Like I said, it's just a little difficult with those directions because I swear they don't really go into the arms correctly. Like they show you the picture, but I, I, I swear it doesn't mention pulling down this flap. And I swear it doesn't even really tell you to push these in. I mean, obviously it's intuitive and you'll figure it out, but I don't know. There's on the back of the car directions are not always the best. But I love this vehicle mode. I think it looks great. So I was transforming him back into robot mode and I realized something and I wanted to share with you guys real quick. And I apologize, my lights will probably go nuts on me. You can see here on the shoulders how there's kind of a tiny little hook on each one. So you kind of want to bring this down and then you can bring the shoulders down and that's what will keep this from flopping about. You hook them into those little, and I'll, I'll do that again real quick just to show you. You can see how there's these little sp like spaces on these little handles. So when you push this down and then you hook the shoulders in and that's what keeps that from flopping around. So I kind of just had a eureka moment. And again, the directions don't really showcase that at all. So it's kind of a bummer. Um, but I wanted to show you guys that real quick because it really does make a difference. And it really shores up the robot mode a lot. And makes uh, that section not flop around when you try to move the shoulders. So now we finished the robot mode transformation here. And you can see, you know, I can move these around. And plus it makes it so that the shoulders lock in place before when I was trying to move them up and down. That doesn't really make sense to do because they're keeping the torso all together. So I think that's, uh, again, the directions don't really show it, but definitely something you want to know. And I just, I don't have enough good things to say about this guy. I really did not expect to love this figure as much as I do. Initially when I saw pictures, I thought another sound wave with that same alt mode. I'm kind of over that. Um, but it's great. It really is a nice job. It's kind of the culmination of all the other figures that had this alt mode because a lot of the, or at least I should say the war for Cybertron had like weird wheel kibble that hung off his back. And they've obviously found a way to solve that problem. And the fall of Cybertron one was a Voyager class. And that had the, the little circle, like not, they were like the tapes, the cassettatrons or cassetticons, I should say. But they were circle discs and you could put them in his chest and it would close. So 
again, I think even that, that mold had some kibble. So they've kind of perfected this alt mode for sound waves. So if you were holding off and you were looking for like the best one to buy, I kind of think it's this one. Yes, he doesn't have any kind of tape in his chest gimmick, but I feel like Soundwave doesn't always need that. And if you're looking for that, there's an excellent Titans Return version of Soundwave that does have that gimmick, so you can go out and grab that. If you're just looking for a fun, warrior class, fairly inexpensive representation of Soundwave with this alt mode that I think they've done a good job with, this is the guy to pick up. Really like this figure a lot and really surprised by this figure. The ingenuity and the engineering... Uh, to come up with this transformation. I think it's really well done. Uh, but I'm just gushing at this point. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like and share this video. And please subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at Warrior Class Soundwave from Transformers Robots in Disguise. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.